Hey everyone, Boone here. Today we're looking at some new 3D tools inside of Adobe After Effects. These include new tools to help you navigate around your 3D environment, as well as customize specific layers. Okay, so I'm inside of my After Effects project here. I've got a 4K Ultra HD comp set up, and I've got two basic assets here. I've got a map, and then I've got a little airplane here. And what I'm going to be doing is just animating this airplane, you know, flying over the map. And to make it a little more interesting, I want to create a 3D environment using some of these new cool 3D tools. So basically to create a 3D scene, all you need to do is activate the little 3D switch next to a layer. If you can't see these switches down here, go down and click on the toggle switches and modes button and then you'll be able to see them. So I'm going to activate 3D for both the airplane and the map. And when I work in a 3D environment, I generally like to have two viewports. You can change that in the comp panel where it says one view. You drop down this menu here and I can switch that to two views. Or you can simply right click and go to switch view layout. And then you can select between one, two, and four or, you know, totally customize it. I like to have the left side set to top view. However, once again, you can select it, right click, and then do switch 3D view, and you can pick whatever angle you want. One of the first big updates uh, to this version of After Effects is this new gizmo controller. So this allows you to customize your layer quickly and easily right here in the comp panel. You can change the scale, the position, and the rotation all using this little gizmo, and it has a bunch of cool tool tips. So let's check it out. I'm gonna turn off the map layer here so we can really get a good look at it and kind of zoom in here. Now as I'm mousing over the gizmo here, you can see it's showing me different things. I have rotation controls, so I can rotate on the Z axis, I can rotate on the Y axis, X axis. If I hold shift, it's gonna snap in 45 degree increments here. And I can scale by grabbing the squares and it's gonna scale. At first, it's not constraining the proportion, so to do that, I simply hold shift. And you can see how quickly and how easily I can do everything right here inside of the comp panel. I don't have to dive down into any of the parameters of the layer. Also, as with before, you have local access mode and world access mode. So local access mode is gonna make all those transformation changes based on the layer, whereas world access mode is gonna change it in relation to the actual composition. So let's say I just wanna pull this out in Z space, but I've already rotated the layer a bit. I wanna to switch to a world access mode and then I can grab the Z here and pull it back and it's gonna keep all the other layer attributes or layer rotation changes that I made. Now I'll switch back to local access mode. Now, if you're working in an environment where you're doing like a bunch of rotations or you're scaling everything or you're focusing on one uh, kind of parameter, what you can do is you can customize the gizmo to be to basically show you just that parameter. So if you go up here to the toolbar, you can see I can select position and that switches the gizmo to show me just position. And, you know, again, cool tooltips here. The tooltips are showing me how many pixels this has moved in relative to its origin point, as well as where it is in the world. It's showing me the X, Y, and Z. And again, if I hold shift, that's gonna um, snap it to increments of 10. Now I can go over here. This is scale. And rotation. So this gizmo, super, super cool. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the map back on and then I'm gonna reset my airplane here and I'm gonna switch back to universal gizmo. And what I'm gonna do is using these controls, I'm gonna animate the plane flying across here. So I can do this using these two viewports pretty easily. So first I wanna pull it out in Z space. So I'm gonna go over here to the top view and just pull this out. And we wanna maybe move it by like, let's say like somewhere around 700 pixels. Set a keyframe for position and I'm gonna move it to its uh, start point. Let's say we wanna rotate it and we want it to kinda of like fly this way. That's a good starting point there. I'll go to the end and just have it fly like this. And I'll go scale it down a little bit. Okay, I've got a good start to my animation here. Now I'm gonna quickly throw a light up. So I'm gonna right click and select new light. And I'll just add a new parallel here set it to inverse square clamped, and then bring the radius up, you know, to like 1000. Make sure it's casting shadows. Now I want this to keep this simple and just have the airplane casting a shadow on the map. So I'm gonna quickly go down to the material options of the airplane. We want the airplane to cast shadows, but we don't want it to accept lights. And then down for the map, 
We don't want that to accept lights either, but we want it to accept shadows. Okay, now I got a shadow there. All right, cool, now we got a shadow starting to look more 3D. Now I wanna pull that map back a little bit, so I'm gonna grab the map and just bring it back in 3D space, and then maybe even scale it as well. And that'll just pull that shadow off a little bit more, make it a little bit lighter. And one of the biggest updates here that they added is how you navigate within 3D space. So the second that you activate a layer and make it 3D, you're in 3D space and you can actually navigate through that space using new tools. So up here in the toolbar, you can see I have options for orbit, pan, and dolly. Now each of these tools has subcategories and those specify how you're navigating through space and what you're focusing on. So you can focus on a camera's point of interest, uh, the scene, which is like the center of your comp, or you could focus on wherever your cursor is, wherever you have your, your mouse hovering over. And that can be layer specific as well. So it's extremely powerful how you navigate. And the new update here is that it's using the default camera. So after you activate that 3D switch, you can immediately navigate even though you don't have a camera created and set up as a layer. So let me show you. I can go over here to this orbit tool. And if I click and hold, you can see I have orbit around cursor, orbit around scene, orbit around camera POI, which is point of interest. So let's just orbit around a cursor. So if I go over here and I just click and drag, you can see now I'm orbiting around the scene and it's kind of um, orbiting right around the center. But if you look really closely, there is a crosshair there and you can see it on the top view as well. So what's cool about this is it makes it really powerful in how you orbit. So let's say I wanna orbit from the top corner up here. So I can click and drag and now you can see I'm orbiting from that view. And you can also see in my top view where that crosshair is as well. But you can also see that it's specific to that map layer. So it's right there in Z space on the map layer. I'm gonna undo that. So where that's really powerful is if I wanna orbit around my airplane, which is much, much closer, like another 700 pixels closer in Z space, I can do that. And I all I really need to do is hover the mouse over and make sure that I click on that layer. And now when I go to orbit around, you can see that it's orbiting around the airplane and again, if you look in the top view, the crosshair is now in Z space over that airplane layer. Now, what I wanna do here is I wanna do like a uh, basically a dolly in to like Europe or a dolly out or something, and I want the camera to spin a bit. So I can go grab this dolly tool, and there's a couple of different options for the dolly, dolly towards cursor, dolly to cursor, or dolly to camera point of interest. So let me do dolly to cursor, and now I'm gonna move my cursor over Europe here, and I'm just gonna click and drag in. Let's say that we want that to be our endpoint, so we wanna actually zoom into that. So I'm gonna add a keyframe, but wait, there's no camera layer, so what am I animating here? I need to create a camera and so I can animate that camera. I can actually create a camera based on my default camera's view, which is really, really cool. So to do that, I'm gonna to go to View, and right down here it says Create Camera from 3D View. And now, bang, you can see I've added a new camera here. I know I'm kind of like, I don't have a crazy angle here, but you can move that default camera to whatever crazy angle you want and then create that camera based on that angle. I'm going to add a keyframe to my position here and I'll move that to the end. And now we simply want to dolly out of that. Okay, so I've got that dolly move, but another cool thing that I like to do is mess with my camera. So you can use the new layer controls to control your camera as well. So I'm gonna go over to this left view. I'm gonna right click, switch 3D view to front and now I can select the camera and you can see the layer controls here. So I'm just gonna open this up and I'm gonna add a keyframe to the orientation and I'll bring that to the end here. And then let's say we just want that, uh, we want it to have a little bit of a pitch move. All right, now let's have a look. All right, looks great. Adobe has also introduced Draft 3D, which harnesses the power of the real-time engine to you know, reduce lag time and just speed things up if you wanna edit in this mode. And you can actually turn on this 3D ground plane. So if you wanna keep things, um, you know, like not get lost visually, it really helps out a lot, especially if you're working with a lot of layers. And the last cool thing that they've done here for this workflow is that if you're not working with 3D layers, you won't even see all of the 3D tools. So first of all, they've moved them all over here to the right. But if I were to create a new comp, and there aren't any uh, you know, 3D layers, I just drag something in, you'll notice that, let me switch this view layout to one view, you'll notice that I can't see any of those 3D options over here, not until I enable the 3D layer, and then voila, there they all are. So that's keeping things less cluttered, really, really streamlined. All right, so there you have it. Those are the new 3D tools inside of Adobe After Effects. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, and if you wanna see more After Effects content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell.